Hello class and welcome to our eighth lecture series on international finance and I'm your instructor Jamal Haider. So let me remind you we will be having our midterm exam on 11th of November and regarding the paper pattern we already discussed in our previous class that we would be uploading it in parts part one and part two like part one consists of the true false mcqs questions and part two is going to be short questions and answers right okay so i would be also uploading assignment three today and remember the debt line would be 9th of November. Since the assignment is from chapter 4, chapter 4 is already included in our uh, midterm, so it will be, you know, practice for you to solve the assignments and also compare answers. I will be uploading answers on the same date. Okay, remember the other things, for example, you know, this must be handwritten or with e pen, right? You can Mm, you know, send me as a personal message on WeChat. You can submit your assignment. And remember, you need, don't forget to rename your file. Right? And please respect the due date. So, okay. So I think before I also mentioned the time. Time. Two p.m. Beijing. Okay. On 9th of November before 2 p.m. Understand everybody? Yes. So that I would be uploading his answer sheet right at 2 p.m. Shanghai time. And then you can compare your answers. It's not very big assignment. I think four or five questions mostly. Uh, one and short questions, so you can just compare, uh, you know, and do some practice. Okay, so our today's agenda is we will be starting our chapter five. So, chapter five is very, very important because we will be now, sh you know, shedding extensive light on currency derivatives. We talked about in our previous lecture what is put, what is you know, call, what is you know, these two are options. And we talked about the contracts forward and future. So let's just talk about this, how we are going to use these derivatives and what are the uses of these derivatives. Either uh, you know, we can earn profit from this one or either we can use it in our daily business routines or something right we call this hedging it means we need to reduce the risk hedging doesn't mean that the risk is zero so if we fix the risk for example we know that price is going to increase or decrease whatsoever so you just want to you know you don't want to take that risk because your job is to do the business control the business not control the foreign exchange Right? So it's better to just work on your business activities, you know, focus on business operations, selling, buying, making the products, designing new product, catching the market. There are a lot of stuff over there. And let the market decide what would be the exchange rate. So to hedge, sorry. So hedge means that you, you are reducing your risk, right? Reducing your risk. So some you know, students, they are confused that maybe we are eliminating the risk. No, risk is still there. You are taking the risk, you are giving them some premiums, something, but you are planning, okay, so that you plan better. We talked about in our accounting and managerial accounting, you know, budgeting concept. So before the start of the year, uh, every company, every department, they make budgets. And it's their duty to, you know, remain in that budget. Do not, you know, they don't want to deviate from their budgets 
on the basis of budgets, we make budgeted income statement, budgeted balance sheet and other stuff. So, you know, the head office knows, okay, from Africa, we would be receiving this much profit, uh, you know, budgeted expected profit from Africa, okay. From Mexico, we would be receiving this much. From China, from Vietnam, from Korea, from, you know, Moscow, we are receiving this much profit. So that would be the head office projected income, right? So, and the managers are responsible according to their own budgets, right? And we know that market is very volatile, very uncertain, unpredictable. So it's so that's why we have a specialized person who watch on currency movement. So if managers are diverted their, you know, expertise or their attention towards the currency movement, then they will lose focus on business operation. So they plan. So what are the uses of these derivatives? They helps the manager to plan. So can we earn a profit from this? Yes, of course we can do that. So let's just share some more lights on these learning objectives. You can pause the video and you can read it by yourself. So we would be doing that one by one. Let's move forward. So currency derivatives, it means derivative is a contract. And we are talking about currency derivative. We do have stock derivative as well. So in stock exchange, you can find out that. Similarly, you know, we do have forward contracts. We do have, um, you know, future contracts. We do have call, we do have put option on stocks as well. But we are talking about currency, right? So that's why we put currency con currency before the derivative. Which kind of derivative, which kind of market you're targeting. We are targeting the market of Forex, currency. Okay, so currency derivative is a contract whose price is derived from the value of underlying currency. Contract price depends on other currency movements like that. Right? Either you have to pay or either you are receiving based on other currency movement, upward, downward, whatever is, is in the contract. So example includes we have forward, future, and options contract. We do have the definitions of these ones. Um, I'm not gonna waste too much time on the definitions. We already know that. But let's just talk about how the derivatives are used by MNCs. MNCs, those corporations who are doing business in multinational, multinations or you know, more than one countries. Right? So they are big countries. So when MNCs, how MNCs, you know, involve in why there is a huge risk for MNCs because MNCs, they are buying raw material in, in bulk, in millions of millions of dollars. They are, their sales are also in millions of millions of dollars across the globe. Right? So they need to be very careful regarding their cash flows. Even if they have a delayed you know, payments, even if even the payments are delayed for, you know, 30 days, how, you know, they can pay their salaries, their bills, their commitments, everything is going to be disturbed. Right? So this is called liquidity problem or crunch. Now you, you heard this kind of words, you know, the subprime mortgage crisis, liquidity crunch crisis. So what is the liquidity crisis? Company is big. Company have a lot of you know, big company, lot of money, so, you know, but that money cannot be converted into cash to, to, you know, pay off its current liabilities. They have huge buildings, but can these buildings be sold in two or three days or in one week or in, in one month? No, it takes time more than one year. Governments involved, you know, they have to make documentation, this kind of stuff, you know, politics involved. So that's why MNCs, they face huge risks regarding cash flows. Right? So most of the derivatives market are captured by MNCs, big multinational corporations. Can individuals use currency derivatives? Of course, yes. Right? It doesn't mean that a single individual cannot use that. We can also enter into this derivative market. But since the scope of this course is international finance, 
international finance and the our focus is like we, you know, like i explained in our first lecture our focus is mostly on mncs but you can replace it by wealthy individuals or individuals as well right so number one is speculate on future exchange rate movement if your manager is very smart good he knows the things and he has ample time ample cash he can play with the currency currency market and he can earn some extra cash as well right for example a company has a separate department nowadays we call this treasury whose manage, whose responsibility is to manage the cash flows so they know that okay their cash is available for 30 days it's just sitting idle so if they keep it with the bank they will give you minimum interest 1% or maybe 0.111% what if they play with this you know currency derivative you know currency market maybe they can earn 10% return 20% return and they can claim bonus right they can say that look we make this company you know cash flows increase by 20% so company should give a 5% as a bonus as well right so mostly these happen in banks investment banks you know in investment banking department of the big banks so they know that this this much money is sitting idle and they just withdraw the money even for a day even for an hour and they play with that money and they make a huge tons of money and then save it with the bank and earn a huge profit and claim that okay this is our job so banks should give us some bonus as well right okay mostly the purpose the real purpose of derivatives is to hedge exposure to exchange rate risk like i told you mncs they are buying for raw material they are receiving from their customers or receiving profits from different subsidiaries all over the world so their biggest risk is if they are receiving money bigger bigger you know risk is that the currency depreciate right or if they are paying the biggest risk is that the currency appreciate right and which currency foreign not home right i'm talking about foreign currency okay let's skip i'll give you the example this is dollar un and you are here so you are a finance manager of a mnc so let's talk about first customer perspective our customer is in us you send the goods what is the currency uh, you know exchange rate risk goods are being sent and you receive dollar dollar will be converted into un what is the biggest risk here that dollar will depreciate so when you convert into yuan you will receive less yuan and if you are purchasing let me clear this mess here no and If you are purchasing, it means goods are coming from US, right? And you need to pay them in dollars. So, what is the biggest risk? Biggest risk is dollar will depreciate or appreciate. If dollar will depreciate, then you will buy more dollars. You will be happy. if you are paying your biggest problem is the dollar appreciates foreign currency appreciates then it will take more yuan to convert into dollars right because the party here in us will only accept in dollars we need 1000 dollar it takes 7000 yuan to convert into 1000 dollar but now since exchange rate increased to 7.5 now it takes 